Happy Mother's Day, City Church. Now it's time for Pastor Chris to preach a message. Now listen carefully, because this is important stuff. All right. Well, hey, thank you so much to all of our special hosts today. Wow, you guys really did an incredible job. And also, I just want to say happy Mother's Day to all the moms who are tuning in with us today. You know, I don't know about you, but I know for me, I, I am more thankful for moms this year than, than any other year in my life. I mean, haven't they all just had to step up and become like super women? I mean, let's be honest, they've always been superheroes, but, but especially right now, I mean, just one example would be my wife, who in addition to all of her other regular responsibilities, now she she has become a, a stay-at-home mom, an online teacher, a homeschool teacher, and she's a potty trainer for our three-year-old son. And so just, let's just say God bless moms right now. And Madison, I hope you hear me say that I love you. I'm so thankful for you, and I wouldn't be who I am today without you. Happy Mother's Day to you and to all the moms out there. Well, hey, uh, we have been in a series for the last few weeks called For Better or Worse, and we're going to continue in that series today. So if you're just joining us, the purpose of this series is really just, just to help us navigate through this season of life in our relationships. And, and we recognize that right now, all of our relationships have the potential to either get better or worse. And, and so our desire is that as we lean into God's word and, and look to his truth, we, we just firmly believe that your relationships can actually grow stronger and healthier and better than they've ever been before. And so today I've got a special message that, that I'm convinced is going to be uh, very encouraging to all of you who are watching, whether you're a mom or a dad, whether you're married or single, it doesn't really matter what your status is. I, I firmly believe that this message will speak to you and really it will help you navigate through the relationships that we all find ourselves in. Because the bottom line is, uh, can we just pause for a second here and, and agree that like people are messy and therefore relationships are messy? especially in this unique time that we find ourselves in. And so it doesn't matter, like, like marriages, yes, they're messy, but, but dating relationships are messy, parenting is messy, even single people, like it's messy because you're messy, right? And so wherever you go, there you are. So here's what I need you to do right now. We're just gonna admit this together. I need you to turn and look at your neighbor and, and repeat after me, say, people are messy. That's right. Now, now look back at your neighbor and, and repeat after me, say, look who's talking. Yeah, that's right. Look who's talking. You are messy. And so am I. And so because you're messy, because I'm messy, we have a responsibility then as, as followers of Jesus to love the mess out of people. That's what God has called us to do. I mean, let's, let's just summarize the entire Bible in the same way that Jesus did. He said that the entire law can be summarized by saying, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength and love your neighbor as yourself. So that, that's our calling. Like we are called to love God and love our neighbors. And so for you right now, your neighbor may be your spouse, it may be your kids, it, it may be a coworker, it may be somebody you're in a dating relationship with, it may be a loved one, it may be literally a neighbor who lives next door or across the street, but we are called to love our neighbors and, and to love the mess out of people. And so today I'm just gonna preach out of one verse, one simple verse, it's found in the book of James. So if you have your Bibles, you can turn there with me, James chapter one, verse 19 is where we're going to be today. And listen, before I even go there, I just want to say this. What I'm about to preach on is something that we all know. So this isn't going to be new for you, but it's also something that we all struggle with. And so this is going to be a reminder for you. It's going to be a call to action for you, but I also hope that it's going to be encouraging to you. So James chapter one, verse 19, he, he says, my dear brothers, take note of this. So let me just pause right there because what James is saying is that we need to pay attention. Like we need to, to, to lean in and listen in. Don't miss what he's about to say. So my dear brothers, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Wow. I mean, can you imagine if all of us, like if every single one of us who have said yes to Jesus, who have committed our lives to following him, like if we just like committed to living this one verse out, how different our life would be? 
Can you imagine how different your interactions with people on social media would be if we would just simply be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry? I mean, this would just be a game changer for our whole world. And so what I'm going to do is just kind of unpack each one of those statements and talk about how they apply to our lives. So the first one, James says, is that we need to be quick to listen. And I don't know about you, but I know for me that is a huge challenge. Like I am not one to be quick to listen. I'm one to be quick to talk. Like like that's kind of what I do for a living. This is my profession. Like I am quick to talk and I'm also quick to think that I already know the answers and I already have the solution. And so if I just talk enough and talk loud enough, eventually everybody else will figure it out. I am not one to be quick to listen, but the text teaches us, God's word teaches us that we need to be quick to listen. And, and so I want to encourage you right now in this season, be quick to listen. Like, like listen to your spouse. Really, like listen to them. Listen to your kids. Listen to your loved ones. And, and, and so here's what that means. It means that you've got you've to begin asking more questions and making less assumptions. Like, don't assume that you know the answer. Don't assume that you know why they're doing what they're doing. Don't, don't assume that you have the solution. Instead, just, just be quick to listen. Listen to them, like really hear them out, hear what's going on in their lives. And, and also, I wanna say this, listening doesn't mean that you're just simply listening to what they're saying, like what, what's coming out of their mouth, but you're also listening to their, their body language. You're listening to their emotions. You're listening to their feelings, especially with your kids. This is so important to really pay attention, like observe and listen to them, watch and see what's going on. I mean, they're all trying to navigate through this in the same way that you and I are. And so be quick to listen to them. I'll just share one example. And this is really just a confession of a time where where I didn't do this. And it was just just a couple months ago, my son Bennett, he's three years old and man, he was just losing it. Like he was having an all out temper tantrum, you know, crying, throwing a fit, flailing his body around, weeping, yelling, outbursts. I mean, it was just, just really hysterical. And so I, I took him and I said, son, like you're, you're going to timeout. Like you, you can't be around the rest of the family right now. And, and so that only, you know, heightened the, the, the temper tantrum even more. And so now he's sitting in the timeout chair and he's still losing it. And, and so I started to get really frustrated. And, and I, I think to myself, you know what, I'm gonna make this kid change his behavior. And so I start warning him and I tell him, Bennett, you better calm down. And if you don't calm down, there are gonna be even greater consequences. You better calm down or I'm gonna send you to your room. You better calm down. And I keep kind of throwing out these, these verbal threats about, about the consequences that are gonna come if, if he doesn't calm down. And it doesn't help, like it's getting worse. Maybe you've been there before where you've tried to ration, ration with, a, with a toddler, like just, just doesn't happen, doesn't work. And so finally I go over to him and I get right in front of him and, and with a, a very stern voice, I just look right in his eyes and I say, Bennett, I told you to calm down. Now at this point, I'm not calm, yet I'm expecting him to be calm. And he looks right back at me and, and with tears coming down his face, he responds and he says, Dad, I'm trying, I'm trying to calm down. Man, that was a gut punch. And in that moment, I knew like, I've missed it. I have totally blown this opportunity. And and so I just picked him up and I hugged him. And I said, son, I am so sorry. I'm sorry that I didn't listen to you. And then he, he laid his head on my shoulder and he started to calm down. His, his breathing came back down, his crying stopped. And just a few minutes later, he was back to smiling. We were embracing, we were having a great time together. And so I just wanna encourage you, parents, really listen to your kids and, and be quick to listen to them. And, and also like when you make a mistake, admit it, ask for forgiveness, tell them that you were wrong like, like you're not always gonna get it right. And so just, just be real with them and tell them that and do it immediately. And, and I'm telling you, it will change the game for you. But especially when it comes to your kids, you know, they're, they're going through this pandemic just like you are. They're, they're trying to navigate through something that none of us have ever seen just like you are. 
But you know, what, what they don't have that you do have is, is the emotional maturity and, and the life experience and, and the tools that you've been equipped with throughout your life in order to navigate through it in the same way that you are. And so just be, be quick to listen to them. Same thing with your spouse, same thing with your friends, same thing with your community. Like just, just make less assumptions, ask more questions, observe and listen. Second statement that James makes in this text is to, to be first quick to listen, second, slow to speak. Now, if, if being quick to listen is, is challenging, being slow to speak, for many of us, that, that feels like it's, it's just downright impossible, right? Like we live in a, in a world where everybody always has something to say and they always feel like they just have to say it. And so being slow to speak like that is an unbelievably countercultural idea for us. But I'm here to tell you that, that if you would actually put this into practice in your life, like being slow to speak, man, it will only serve you well, especially when it comes to those moments where there's tension, especially when it comes to those moments where there's a disagreement. Maybe you and your spouse, you're having a disagreement. You and a coworker are having a disagreement. You and your kids are having a disagreement. Like, like just, just slow down a little bit. You know, later on in, in James chapter three, he talks about the power of our tongue and, and, and really like how destructive it can be or like how life-giving it can be. And, and I'm convinced that the way our tongues stop becoming so destructive and start becoming so life-giving is, is when we slow them down just a little bit. And, and so here's what this looks like for me. In my life, I, I've developed this rule over the last several years called the 24-hour rule. And so anytime somebody will reach out to me, maybe over a, a text message or, or they'll send me an email or I'll, I'll get a voicemail, where somebody's unhappy, somebody's frustrated with me, somebody disagrees with me, and, and, and they, you know, they have a strong opinion that, that kind of sets me off or makes me upset, makes me aggravated, which believe it or not, can happen in the church world to a pastor. I have this rule that I don't respond for 24 hours. And if I need to respond, but I'm not ready to, then all I say is, hey, I'm gonna need some more time and I'll get back to you tomorrow. And I try to limit it to, to a very brief response so that I can process, so that I can, I can think through and, and, and allow the emotional response to, to kind of calm down and therefore later on have a little more of a, a rational response. And nine times out of 10, actually I would say 990 times out of a thousand, when I come back the next day, the response that I actually give is extremely different than the one I would have given if I would have responded in the moment. And I'm here to tell you, this can be an incredible game changer for you in your life as well. If you would just slow it down a little bit, like be slow to speak. Maybe you need to develop a 24 hour rule. Maybe you need to develop a, a 24 minute rule, like in your home and your family, I get it. Like you can't just tell your spouse, like, sorry, you made me mad. I'm not gonna talk to you for a whole day, but like take 24 minutes. Maybe you need to develop a, a 24 second rule. Like even if you would just, just stop. Have you ever tried that before? Just stop and count to 10. Remember when we were kids, that's what they taught us to do when we were feeling frustrated or angry. Like take a deep breath, count to 10. Okay, try that out. Like count to 10 or 24 and see what happens. But, but listen, be slow to speak. And also, I, I just want to speak to the parents here for a moment. When it comes to the way that we speak to our children and, and, and what we speak to them, there's a principle that someone passed along to me years ago, and, and it's something that I've tried to share with you all. And many of you, you've probably heard me say this before, but I don't always get it right, but I, I have seen this play out in my own life. And, and, and I, I know that it's 100% true. And here's the principle. When it comes to raising your kids, when it comes to parenting your kids, rules without relationship leads to rebellion. Like every single time, rules without relationship leads to rebellion. 
And so when you speak to your kids, make sure that you're not just speaking correction and and discipline into your kids, but make sure that you are speaking relationship into your children. Make sure you are prioritizing the relationship even over the rules. Now, listen, on the other hand, relationship without any rules, that leads to chaos. So that's no good either. But we need to be the kind of people that prioritize the relationship over the rules. Protect the relationship at all costs. Yes, you need rules, but make sure that when when you're speaking into your kids, when you're speaking into your family, you're speaking relationship and, and that that is your focus. Be quick to listen, be slow to speak. And then the last statement that James makes is that we need to be slow to become angry. Now, I, I, I just want to just, just call this out because I, I believe that right now and in, in this season we're in, the enemy is convincing a whole lot of people of a whole lot of lies. And specifically when it comes to your relationships, I, I, I've seen this like a, a whole lot, even, even playing out on social media. And, and I've heard these kind of conversations from folks in, in relationships that are struggling. And, and, and it's a comment that kind of goes something like this. Now that we're in the middle of a pandemic and, and, and you're seeing your, your significant other navigate through this, I, I've heard people say, well, now I'm seeing who they really are. L- like now I, I'm seeing their true colors. Like, like now I know really who this person is and, and I can't trust this person anymore. Or, or, or I don't want to be with this person anymore because if that's who they really are, then, then I don't want anything to do with them. That is a lie from the enemy. And so I'm, I'm just calling it out. Like that is straight from the pit of hell. The truth is the person that you're seeing, like your spouse, your significant other, your, your kids, those, those close relationships that you have, like that, that, this is not the true version of them or the truest version of them. This is the like struggling, trying to figure it out, trying to navigate through a global pandemic that none of us have ever been bef- through before version of themselves. Okay, and so no, they're not at their best right now. None of us are. And so here's what I would ask you to do. Be slow to become angry. Like, like be, be slow to judge. Be slow to be critical. Just, just give them a little grace. Like, can we not just all agree on that right now? That like, we're just going to give each other a little extra grace in this season. Like, we're going to be quick to forgive one another. We're going to be quick to, to, to understand that they're struggling just like we are. And, and just like we need grace, they need it too. And so I just want to, I want to encourage you, like, be slow to become angry and, and be quick to extend that grace because that grace is the same grace that you need and that I need. And finally, I, I just want to, want to speak to anybody who, as you're hearing this message, you're, you're feeling some personal conviction right now. Like, like, man, this, this text, this one verse, it really packs a punch. We, we got to be quick to listen, slow to speak, sl- slow to get angry. And, and maybe if you're like me, you're going like, man, I'm, I'm 0 for 3 here. And if that's you, I want to encourage you that this text applies to you too. And what I mean by that is like, you need to treat yourself the same way. You, you got to be quick to listen to yourself. Like, like pay attention to like how you're actually feeling. Like be aware of, of how you're processing through this right now and recognize that you're going to need some extra grace. So be quick to listen to yourself. Like, like just give yourself some space and some time to actually process life. Secondly, be slow to speak. And what I mean by that is you've got to be cautious with that internal dialogue that's going on in your head. Like, like turn that down a little bit right now. Because here's what I know about all of us. We are all our own worst critic and the enemy loves to play on that. And so when you make a mistake, when you sin, when, when you say something you shouldn't, when you do something you shouldn't, when you react in a way that you know you shouldn't, the enemy just, just pounces on that. And then he starts to play on that internal dialogue. And so I want to encourage you, just, just turn that down and instead turn, turn the volume of God's word and his truth about what he says over you Turn that up a little bit. Like, like you need to slow down and, and, and be slow to speak about what you, you think and feel about yourself and rather begin to, to let God speak what he thinks and feels about you instead. Be quick to listen, be slow to speak. And then finally, like, be slow to become angry with yourself. Like, like 
Like, don't be so hypercritical of yourself. Like, just give yourself some grace. You're not going to get it right all the time. Like, it, it, it's okay. And, and you're going to get a fresh start. And, and when you make a mistake, own it. Apologize for it. Don't, don't accuse or, or blame. Just, just own it. But then also, give yourself grace. And expect others to do the same for you. Be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry with yourself. And I know every week in this series so far, I've, I've really been challenging the men. But right now, I just, I just want to specifically speak to the women and, and to the moms out there. Like for you, especially today, this season, right now, for yourself, give yourself some extra grace. Like, just, just do it. I know you don't want to. I know it's really hard to. And I know you're so quick to give your kids grace, give your husband grace, give everybody else in your life grace, but you're so slow to give that same grace to yourself. And I'm just trying to share the word of God with you today, that it's time for you to be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry, even with yourself. And so here's how I want to wrap up the message today. I, every week I've been trying to give some practical application. And so I've just got three things that, that you can all do this week. And, and so, so he, here they are. The, the first one I want to challenge you with this week is to make sure to spend some time praying with your family every day. So, so if you're married, pray with your spouse. If you've got kids, pray with your kids. Take some time every day and pray with your family. Now, some of you, you may already be doing this. Maybe you do it a lot and that's great. Others of you, maybe you haven't done it or maybe you just pray at the dinner table. Listen, that's fine. I just want to encourage you, if you haven't developed this routine, this habit yet, start this week. Just, just pray together. Spend some time praying together. It doesn't have to be long. You don't have to pray in, in the King James Version of the Bible language. Like, just, just be real. Be you. It, it, it could be brief. It could be simple. But just spend some time praying together as, the, as a family. The second thing I want to challenge you to do is at some point in the next seven days this week, I want to encourage you to have a family fun night together. I mean, come on, like we need that. You need it, okay? We all do. And so I just want to encourage you, maybe, maybe you're going to spend some time playing games together. I, I don't know what you're going to do, but, but just take some time, agree on a day, agree on a time, and have a family fun night together. And two rules for this. The first one, no phones. This is really just for me. My wife will tell you that. Like, like I've got to say this rule just for myself. So no phones. The second one, no COVID talk. All right. Like, like no COVID or anything related to it. So that includes politics and, and, and that includes, you know, your opinion on the situation. Just none of that. All right. None of that's going to be any fun. We're talking about a family fun night. So have a family fun night together. No phones, no COVID talk. And then the last one is for those of you who are married, I want to encourage you, give your spouse the gift of some alone time this week. I, I don't know how long it's going to be. Maybe, maybe it's just an hour. Maybe it's going to be like several hours. Maybe it's going to be for a whole day. If you've got kids, take the kids, give your spouse some alone time. Now, men, listen, we're, we're naturally really good at finding alone time for ourselves. Like many of you, you know when that alone time is. It's when you're in the bathroom. Okay, so let's all be honest here. You do not need to spend that much time in the bathroom. We know you're just trying to avoid everybody else. Okay, so you're going to do that on your own. Give your wife the gift of some alone time this week. But both of you, make sure to prioritize that. Figure out a way to do it. So, so that they can just, just have some time by themselves and some time with God without any interruptions so, so that they can practice what we're preaching here today. And, and so that's my challenge for you this week. Now listen, here in just a moment, we're going to worship. And, and then after worship, I want to encourage you to stick around because I've got a couple of, of pretty exciting announcements. One of them even involves our, our plan of action toward reopening. So don't go anywhere. But before we worship, let me just pray for you. Heavenly Father, I just want to say thank you today for every single person who is tuning in. Uh, I, I just want to say thank you, especially for all the moms out there who are watching along with us today and just for the blessing that they are to each and every one of us. And God, I, I just pray over all of our relationships. We know that relationships are messy. God, you know it. We know it. 
And so I, I just pray that you would help us all to, to extend some extra grace to one another in this season, that, that you would help us to, to be quick to listen, to be slow to speak, to be slow to become angry. And God, that you would also help us to apply those same truths to ourselves, that we would give others grace, but that we would also give ourselves grace. And God, we, we know that you are also giving us that same grace and mercy and love. And so we say thank you for who you are. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.